Hello, my name is Doreen Helen Beldotan in Svatten, Israel. And um, please forgive the way I look when I get upset. I have skin eruptions and I always look the least presentable when I must present something. Forgive me. I'm not being dramatic when I tell you that in making this video I am taking my own life and liberty in my hands. But I must do it and um, before I even start I'm going to ask some of you to please download this video fast uh, so that if it's taken down by the Israeli authorities there are copies of it and make it go viral. <clears throat> I have every reason to believe that the Israeli court system is a continuation of ancient uh, human sacrifice cults. Um, I have per personal <clears throat> experience with the court system and uh, I am not uh, making this video uh, in order to, uh, to influence my case uh, favorably. In fact, <clears throat> it may very well influence my, <clears throat> my case unfavorably, but I have no more right to life and liberty than do other people who far, far exceed me in justice and righteousness who are sitting in jail now um, and uh, I must speak out because uh, the situation is beyond control. On 2nd of, of August, when I say by the way, when I say that the situation is beyond control, I mean that um, some of the most famous and respected jurists professors of, of law, former judges, um, have described the Israeli court system as a total jungle. I am quoting, they actually said, jungle totali. So um, it's a very direct quote. Um, something has to be done and the system is too moribund uh, to be able to self-correct from within. I'm asking people who have uh, connections with people inside of the American government to see that they get this information and uh, start to look into what's really going on here because we have a catastrophic situation with our courts on our hands. Again, I am not here to uh, try to get uh, a public uh, interest in, in my case. Um, if I if that had been my, my, my purpose, I would have talked about my case long ago. It's been going on for years. But because my the, the judge who is now hearing my uh, appeal, Judge uh, Esther uh, Hellman, is one of the judges who put this man away um, f for life, uh, I have earned the right to speak about the court system because no one should ever, ever come up in front of a judge who put a man, this is, um, this is uh, Roman Zadorov, who put a man uh, away for life, who the chief pathologist, his assistant pathologist, two forensic experts, Guy Cooper and um, William uh, Bodziak, who were, who were brought to Israel for their opinion, think that he's innocent. The mother of the victim thinks that he's innocent and has worked for trying to find the right man. Um, no one should ever, ever have to come up in front of a judge for their case. Certainly not for a case in a Jewish state in which someone is being tried under Ottoman law for insulting a public official for trying to protect children that are being trafficked in this country. That's my case. That's another issue. But because it got me involved in the judge, one of the judges that handled his case, um, I have the right to speak. 
another one of the judges who put Roman Zadarov away. So was, he's a former judge, is by the name of Yitzchak Kohen. He was then the head of the uh, three-judge panel. He heard, a, a, in fact, an appeal. He judged against Roman Zadarov twice. He was then the head of the uh, district court in Nazareth. And um, he was a, a nominee for the Supreme Court. Thank God he, he got so bold that he was stupid enough to sexually molest um, a, a woman from the state attorney's office who finally opened up her mouth and he was removed for a series of sexual improprieties and word has it that there are seri much more serious sexual improprieties which weren't even dealt with. He served no jail time whatsoever. They just took him down from his post quietly and he's walking around a free man. While the man, this man, who all forensic experts, all the forensic experts who examined the, the, the evidence say that he's free, is still in jail on the word of a sexual pervert. One of the three judges who sat on that case, uh, I believe has passed away. The third, Esther Hellman, is now the head of the three-judge panel that is hearing my appeal for insulting a, a public official under Ottoman law in a country that the judges are trying to tell us is Jewish and democratic. On the 2nd of August, a judge by the name of Uwe Shoham from the uh, Supreme Court, who has just now um, resigned his position, he retired, let another man go free for murder after he was in jail for 12 years. Roman Zadarov has been in jail almost for almost 12 years. So at that time, there were two cases going on of innocent people who were being put away for life for murders that they did not commit. Roman Zadarov is still in jail. Uri Shoham found him innocent, even though he confessed. This is, this is the thing that they do in Israeli courts. They get a confession out of you. And even if the evidence contradicts your confession, they will still go on with the, with the trial and find you guilty because you confessed. It doesn't take a genius to understand that they will do then anything to get that confession out of you. And there has already been a case in which minors... Jewish minors were tortured to try to extract a, a confession out of them. They were repeatedly tortured in this Jewish democratic state. Then, this, the, 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 in their case also, the case was dropped because uh, they found that they, 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 they couldn't even fabricate evidence against these kids. I have seen with my own two eyes that contradictory evidence overrides a confession. I confess to insulting a public official not because they first of all they didn't have the videos. They lost. They said they lost the videos. The the um, state attorney who's working on my case, Yale Katz, has been singularly and particularly mentioned in an expose about the manipulation uh, and falsification of pathological information, okay? The pathological inf uh, evidence. In my case, they just lost the videos. Didn't matter, they came to court without the lost videos anyway. They asked me whether, they, they gave me a a, a typed out list of, of statements. Did you say this? Did you say that? Did you say the other thing? And I'm going to be very honest with you. I said some of those things. I didn't say some of those things. Some of the things that I admitted to saying myself were things that um, I had a feeling that they were working up a case against someone else. And I was afraid that if they would attribute that to her, that she would be in much more trouble than I was in because her name is Lori Shemtov. And I knew that she was 
um, in their crossfires in a big way. And I was right about that because Lori Shemtov is now sitting in jail for insulting public officials, meaning telling the truth about judges and telling the truth about social workers. In fact, one of the judges that Lori Shemtov said was corrupt has subsequently been removed from her post after it was found that she was falsifying evidence together in the background with, a, uh, with, a, with an attorney. That, that conversation was recorded and shown on the internet. She was taken down and one of the judges who took her down is Esther Hellman who is listening to my case. So Esther Hellman knows very, very well that there are judges who are corrupt that Lori Shemtov was talking about and yet Lori Shemtov is still rotting in jail. And so is Roman Zadarov. His his wife Olga Zadarov wrote this book and I recommend to you very highly to see a, um, a, a four-part series about this case which has been translated into English and was put up on Netflix. The fourth part is the most frightening because that talks about the person who is most likely to be the subject, the, the, the real subject of interest in this case while Roman is taking the rap for her. This person is walking around free in between psychiatric hospitalizations when she begins to admit that she was the one who committed the murder. They put her in a psychiatric ward again, okay. in and out and in and out. Bear in mind that it has been said that this woman who's the interest in the, in the Roman Zadarov case, not that he did it, but that she probably did it, is working as a sadomasochistic prostitute. And remember that I tell you that, that Yitzchak Cohen, the judge who found her guilty, who headed that three-judge panel, has subsequently been taken down for sexual impropriety, for sexual perversion. And my question is... Was Yitzchak Cohen one of her clients? There is something radically, radically wrong in the Israeli justice system. I have sent information to the American government. Please, please let the, the American government know that Americans know that there's something going on here. In that, you've seen pictures, I'm sure, of the Supreme Court, and you can see the, the, the Masonic architecture of it. Well, take a look at the at pictures of the court in Nazareth, and it, it, it's more scary. It's even more in your face. Logic will tell you why there may be a death cult centered around Jerusalem and Nazareth. a cult involving the prosecution of righteous Jews, of innocent Jews, would probably be centered around Yerushalayim and Nazareth. From what I have seen bifnim, uh, inside, from the insider's point of view, from the point of view of someone accused and tried, I can tell you there is something radically wrong, again and again and again. My lawyer has said that my civil rights have been abused all the way along. And this is normal. It's not because of me specifically. This is the norm here. And yet the trial goes on. There is, they, they found now within the, the paperwork of Lori Shemtov a form, uh, a, a, some kind of a document, I mean, from the uh, police that says that... Um, the time in which they say that I put up those uh, videos is contradicted by this document. It says that it's, an, it's, it's another time, a month later, a month earlier. I'm not exactly clear about it. But there is a document that shows that what they're saying about, about films that they don't even have is not true. And yet, they are going on. My judge, my, my judge, my, my, my lawyer was... was and from my mouth to God's ears, she really should be a judge. She's a good kid. There's, uh, 
there, this document should have immediately dismissed the, the case. It didn't. All that it did was get um, a, another hearing and the, the case goes on. So I have seen how even when evidence contradicts the person's confession, they go along with the confession even when they, even when when four independent four, two in totally independent from America forensic experts and the, the, the man who is now the chief pathologist, Chen Kugel, who has been threatened, actually threatened, because he refused to change reports. He was threatened. They said, you know, it would be a shame if something happened to you. He said this in an interview on television. And his assistant, Maya, Maya Froman Resnick, all say that this man is innocent, and yet and still he, was, he, he confessed. People can see in, 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 in the uh, uh, video of the confession, of uh, the, the, the reenactment, I mean the reenactment that he he's bewildered he, he he walks into the wrong bathroom stall it clearly this man was was being led around repeating things that he was told to say and he incriminated himself even though the evidence shows this man is innocent they go along with it why because someday there'll be a, a supreme court judge who has a very, very bad conscience and who has made some really bad decisions and who has made some really dirty dealings in the background is going to want to have one good word about him or her before they, when they, when, when, when they, uh, when they uh, retire and then they're going to, to, to find this man innocent in order to make themselves look good like they did this with this Chayav Tov back in... Uh, in August. This is exactly what happened. The head state attorney, Shai Nitzan, is so problematic, so problematic, that not only did a former judge quit because he insulted her so badly, who was, who was um, check, checking the, the workings of, of the, of the uh, state attorney, she quit. They insulted her so badly, and quite frankly, having been a, 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 uh, a district court judge, I think she should have been a little bit tougher than that, and she should have had the goodness of, of the, uh, the, the, the public at heart instead of quitting herself. You see, this is them. They, they are so narcissistic, they are so self-centered, that her personal reputation, so that the, somebody shouldn't say something bad about her, is more important to her than the good of the entire state. This is them. This is the material of the people that become the judges. And, and she's one of the better ones. She is actually one of the more respectable ones. But what's far more important is that their own manicure. I have actually seen judges checking their manicures in cases involving minors. I've actually seen this whether in, 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 in uh, discussions about whether or not to take a child out of their home, a judge looking to see that his manicure, his manicure, was, 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 was perfect. Getting back to Shiny Tsan, his own state attorneys are starting to say that he's le leaving uh, scorched earth behind him in his decisions. They're saying that he's, 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 he's selling out the, the, the state attorney's office as though it was some kind of a clearance sale. And another thing. Former head of the Supreme Court, Aharon Barak, who has been uh, written about, I think very, very poignantly, by a, uh, a legal expert by the name of Posner, I don't remember his first name. His name is Posner, and he wrote something about the benevolent dictator, about uh, our own Barack. There is no such thing as a benevolent dictator. That man is the godfather of the legal system, and he is very, very, very close to George Soros. He recommends that in order for judges to advance their careers, that they, ta they take special courses that George Soros' uh, 
uh, one of his foundations have for Israeli judges. They fly them to America and they wine them and they dine them for a year and they're given housing and they're given all kinds of con uh, 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 con you know, conditions, living conditions, and, and uh, they, they get their brains, uh, brains uh, uh, washed by, by uh, George Soros foundation. And if people want to uh, advance them, so excuse me, I'm very, very upset because these things are extremely problematic. We have a death cult operating. We have a, 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 it's, we have a, a, a satanic cult operating within our court system. There's absolutely no doubt about it. In order to advance their careers, they have to take these George Soros courses, the, 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 the judges. Uh, I cannot say that all of the judges are involved in it. There has been a judge like uh, Shelley Timian, who after 20 some odd years of being a, a district court judge in Tel Aviv, couldn't take it anymore. He said, I can't stand watching innocent people rotting in jail, can't do this anymore, picked up and left. I know that... Um, Judge uh, um, Hannah Ben Ami, who was a district court judge in Jerusalem, she uh, founded the family court when she uh, when when she retired. She went public with the things that she had seen that went on in public in in, um, in, in family court. And the social workers wrote to Tzipi Livni at the time and said to Tzipi Livni, "Shut her up," meaning Hannah Ben Ami, the judge. I don't think that Livni responded to that, but the fact that the social workers' organization should write to the, the, the Minister of, of Justice and, and say, shut this judge up, quite literally. This is, it's, it's still on the net. She said that she went to, Hannah ben -Ami said that she went to the people above her. She told them that the social workers are giving in falsified documents about these children, and on the basis of that, the judges who don't know what the situation is other than the, the, the documents that are being given to them from the social workers are sending children for adoption or sending children to institutions, making other life-changing decisions for these children and for these families. And she has seen that these documents are false. In fact, when there was a, a, a request for an adoption that, she, that Judge ben -Ami did not want to sign, and she saw that there was something wrong in the evidence presented, and she took the, the, the child welfare officer aside and said, what's going on here? There's obviously something that, that doesn't jive. And the answer that the Judge ben -Ami said that she got was, you have to sign that out. We're under quota for producing children for adoptions. We have a quota that we have to fulfill. We're under quota in our district. You have to sign that document. Judge ben -Ami was absolutely astounded when she heard that. Came forward with it and may, had a number of different uh, uh, um, uh, lectures about it and meetings with it. She knows Lori Shem Tov well. In fact, Judge ben -Ami said, all these people have to defend themselves who've had their children taken away from them is their voices. Of course, they're going to describe things in 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 in, in, in terms of that 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 express their pain. These people are in the worst pain that someone's can can be. Their their children were taken away from them wrongly to fulfill quotas, and then then they are tried for insulting public officials? How is a woman supposed to describe elegantly and politely the fact that there are judges who are cooperating knowingly with social workers who are taking children away and marketing them? And now that we know what becomes of some of the children who are bought, we now know about the pedophilia, we now know about the snuff films, we know about the experiments. We know that, that, that Yemenite children were for sure sold for experimental purposes because the government has admitted it. The government, uh, government admitted what happened 40 years ago 
in order to get our attention off what is happening now. We know it's what, what, what becomes of some of these children. They're not bought by, by, by rich f families that can give them the best. That happens also, but that's the fig leaf. The real reason for these children being born is to keep somebody's bottle of adrenochrome filled. God! Please do what you can to help. I am. Um, I think I've said enough. Please see that documentary on 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 Netflix and um, please download this video. My husband is home. Bye.